feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Devil Wings. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walsh Live, Worldwide. That's right, you tell them, little buddy. You tell them, you listening to Late Night. Late Night with Jerry Walsh Live, Worldwide, and the beautiful Kimmy Kim out of St. Louis. Welcome, everybody. We hope you had a great weekend. The weather was great. On, at least on the East Coast, it was great. I had a great time. Worked in the yard with my baby boy. He's like doing a little landscaping project. This did a kitchen project and also did, uh, what else I did? I know I did three projects. <laughs> but anyway, we're back, y'all, on Monday night with Kimmy Kim. And I'm Jerry Woods Live Worldwide right here in Maryland. The beautiful, beautiful charm city, Baltimore. All right, yeah, we got a great guest tonight. Tonight, this right, she's the author of Fresh Wind When Fear Knocks Down Faith to Answer. That's powerful. That's right. Dr. Sims is here. So we're gonna talk to her. Well, at least Kimmy Kim gonna talk to her. But right now I'm gonna talk to Kimmy Kim real quick and see what's going on in Kimmy Kim's world. What's going on in your world? Kimmy Kim, how you doing? I'm good. How about you, Jerry? Good, good. Um, I, I got some advice not to say Happy Memorial Day, but I saw it in like every store I went to, uh, include my fitness center. It said Happy Memorial Day. It basically is we're honoring the fallen soldiers. So, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's not really a happy occasion for those that lost someone close. Yeah. 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 My wife got a chance to go to the cemetery and, uh, Pay homage to her dad. Uh, he served in World War okay. Two. Yeah, World War Two. Okay. Yeah, they had a big ceremony and yeah. everything out there. I mean, you get there early, you get to see all that stuff. You know. Yeah. And you guys are in not too far from DC, so I'm sure it was very beautiful out there. And oh yeah. In DC, so. Yep. This area. Yeah, it was. It was. It was beautiful. I mean, it was. It was pretty hot on. I think it was Saturday. No, it was really hot Sunday. <laughs> but uh Yeah, Saturday was really nice. Yeah. Sunday it got blazing hot here as well. Yeah, and we had like a super crazy. storm super storm on Friday. It was called like tornadoes and stuff. High winds, a lot of rain. But um yeah, we got a chance to a- do some much much needed outdoor work. Uh got myself a a power washer. I always wanted one of them. Mm-hmm. It was on sale. I had to go get it. Yeah, <laughs> that's then, a good thing. Yeah, I was, I was pop washing all the way up until us uh, eight o'clock tonight. Yeah, I was out there doing the deck. I gotta go see what it looks like in the morning. So anyway, um, how was so? Did you get a good weekend? Was it good? I did. I took the podcast off this weekend and just enjoy the family. Yeah, yeah I tend, yeah. I tend to have to do that sometimes. You know. Yeah, so, sometimes you gotta take one. You gotta take a day for yourself. You know, holiday because we always working. You know, we yeah, always work. Yeah, so you get it. You know, yeah. we always working. I know. You know? I, I did take so a little doing, break. You you doing, but you're doing like TV shows. <laughs> so I can only imagine that. I so. took a break. Well, actually, we supposed to been taping on Saturday, but uh, 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 the guests had an emergency. So we had to postpone that one. But um, I got a chance to get out there and do some, you know, do some stuff, you know, wash the cars and play around with my power washer. And, um, I don't know. I, it was good to have a whole Saturday off and and Sunday. I did. I didn't. Even, I I did hardly any social media. You know, I was like ghost man watching movies. Yeah, I'm not going to tease y'all, but I got a chance to sit in my my um, home theater, <laughs> enjoy some movies till three in the morning. You know, so that was kind of stuff. Mm, you know, got a chance to do this holiday. Awesome. Yeah, this is kind of like Memorial Day, kind of opens the door to the summer the pools are open now seeing kids you know coming from the pool so um you know ice cream places all the ice cream outdoor ice cream parlors you know we get your snowballs all them things are open now it's officially mm-hmm. summer to me this is it you know kids are out well yeah. at least the college kids are out I'm, I'm not sure about the uh secondary schools yet but I don't know. I, I, I said we could put a stamp on this summer. It's summertime. All right. 
All right. Well, are well, you ready? It's a good, I'm sorry. It's a good time. Yeah. No, if it's a good time to just celebrate, you know? Yes, right. Uh, you know, it's good to sometimes just like, spend time with the family, like you said, and yeah. unwind. And That's right. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and also yeah. Uh, today, my wife and I got a chance to finish celebrating our wedding anniversary that was in April. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, well, we got uh, you know, we, we was trying to prepare for baby girl's graduation and packing both of the kids up from college. You know, all that was on our list. So we we kind of put out, we did a little something. We did do like two restaurants that day. It was in the middle of the week, but then she we had like some gift cards came in, so we said we're going to an expensive restaurant and and chill out and and, and have a good time. So that's what we did. So we did that today. So, um, yeah, it's a great weekend. Great weekend. All right. Are you ready for your guests? You ready to talk to the author of Fresh Wind? When Fear Knocks, Send Faith to the Answer. Is that right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's deep. That's deep stuff right there. Looking forward to her. I love her bio. Yeah. Doctor. So I guess it's Dr. Sherry Owen Sims. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to really talk to, um, mode today like we 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 be always working with scheduling all the time so i I'll, i forget to ask her about the um pronunciation of her guests her clients i always forget oh it's all good yeah yeah we, I guess you know we're how gonna, i am i'm going to figure it out yeah so. we're going to figure it out we're here we ready to let her in hello dr sims welcome to late night how you doing i'm great and you guys yeah yeah i'm doing good that's right good to hear Bye. from you yeah <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to hear. I um, well, I listened to James Fortune. I was on there when you guys were interviewing James. Fortune. Yeah, that's a good show. Uh, shout out to uh, Round the Clock Entertainment, Clarita Hatton Jackson. She comes on. Sometimes we need the fuller space. We appreciate Blue Blue Flame Moments, so you guys can catch that at 11 o'clock uh, pretty much every day of the week, um, Monday through Thursday on, on Late Night. But thank you so much for being part of Late Night, and we hope you guys have a great show. I'm just here to say hello, and thank you for uh, coming on the show. Amen. Well, thanks for the invite. You're welcome. All right, Kimmy Kim, have a great show. I'm right here if you need me. Thank you so much, Jerry. And once again, thank you so much for this opportunity, Jerry, to be on uh, Positive, Positive Powers. We want family. And how you doing, my sister? I'm great. You having a great weekend and enjoying this yeah. wonderful weather? Well, I am. You know, I, I did have love to my family. I lost a nephew this past week, but I, I uh, decided I to go ahead with the interview. Uh, she did tell me I had a choice, and I decided to go ahead, you know, interview. That's what he mm-hmm. said to me. Go ahead. So oh, sorry but, for your loss. Yes. Well, not so, loss, so. but more so. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, so not guys, easy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I just want to thank you, Doctor Sims, for this opportunity to have this wonderful fellowshipping time. But before yes. we begin, can you tell the listeners who is Doctor Sims? I'm Dr. Sims. I'm, uh, I'm Pastor Sims. I'm actually a pastor. I'm Dr. Oh, I'm Dr. Okay. Sherry Sims. <laughs> I just got ordained in January, associate pastor at the World Shakers International Church here in Atlanta, Georgia. So when you guys, he just said he was here. When you guys in this area, come see us in Lawrenceville, Georgia. So yeah. Oh, uh, um, wow. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm an author. I host the International Global Move Women uh, Conference, which I'm umbrella under that. It's Girl Live, a new girl from the block, new guys from the block. And I just started a nonprofit organization. It's called She Smile. And this year, we did She Smile presenting E Smile. And that's, that's uh, dealing with trafficking and stuff like that. A book I got coming out called Get Up. So it's a powerful book, and it's uh, uh, it's it's a very interesting story. And believe me, I don't mind coming back and giving that story. That book will get come out this year. Awesome! You are a busy uh, young lady here. I mean, you have an author, you're a pastor, and uh, your bio is definitely uh, amazing <laughs> to me. Um, Thank you. How long have you been writing? Well, actually, 
Um, it's very interesting. I started writing. Um, first time I ever wrote anything was at night. I believe I was twenty one, and it's it's it's, it's, it's it all has to do with that book that's coming out. And um, uh-huh. I started writing at the age of twenty one, and um, I was in prison. So Seth, I had shot a guy and went to prison, and I and I didn't know I was a writer. And I wrote my first song there, and it was self defense. And I stayed there almost a year to find out I was free to go the very next day, which I came out delivered, you know. And um, I learned then. It was there when I learned that I was a writer. I have my first play coming to the studio this year. To, uh, actually, just coming to the theater. My first time ever doing a play at the theater. It's going to be called Order in the Church. And I've been writing plays for the last uh, 25 years. And the amazing people come. And I messed around and wrote one here in uh, Georgia. And the producer was there. And they thought, wow, you don't get in the theaters. So I'm excited about what God is doing. Um, I wrote my first book. Uh, I actually have three books out, uh, Fresh Wind. I did another book called uh, 70 Words, uh, Fresh Wind, 70 Words Faith Journal. And then I did uh-huh. what, do you mean to pray through, what Do You Mean to Pray Through Book. And I'm actually literally working on a, my main book called Get Up. At the age of 16, I was kicked up by a pimp, raped out over 100 times. A police officer swinging me to death, ran door to door, butt naked. Um, and finally, one little quarter saved my life. I ended up making a phone call two weeks later. Uh, one of my sisters answered, and I made it home. And to make a long story short, I host an international global move, pulling down stronghold and men and women. And that's what my nonprofit organization is about. She smiled. Because then he smiled because it's a lot of that that goes on trafficking. And I've been doing this for the last 25 years. Wow. You do have an amazing story. Because I'm reading here that uh, Dr. Sims <laughs> graduated from Cornerstone High School at the age of 42. I was like, yeah. wow, you are an amazing <laughs> person. You didn't give up. No. <laughs> you have to fight. Wow. And you receive your... Uh, masters, and now you're writing, and you are a wife and grandmother, and you have grandchildren. How do you make time for yourself? I actually received a doctorate degree at the age of forty nine. Um, oh wow! I, I literally, literally, I have a lot of time to myself because a lot of things I do, like my writing, is all done right here at home. Like, I'm going to write a little tonight after we get off. I'm working on my plate because I'm going to have my first casting call worldwide. And um, I just write. I got, like, probably if I would get, pick up all my writing from the last 10 years, I probably got about 10 books already written. So I, mm-hmm. I pretty much, um, a homebody, pretty much be at home a lot. And I just write. And through the pandemic, I had plenty of time to write. <laughs> oh, Wow. So tell us more about this casting call that's going on, about your play that's coming up. Would it be in Georgia as well? Yes, it's going to be in Georgia, but I'm I'm praying that this would be the one. So God gave me this a couple of years ago. My mom had got uh, really sick. I lost my mom in 2018. lost my dad until 2020. But um, God gave me, on the way home from seeing my mom, God had gave me, uh, he said, I want you to do a play called Order in the Church. And this right before the pandemic came. And you know how we do. We mess around and don't get it done, don't get it done. And then all of a sudden the pandemic came. And all I can think of is how it hit the churches and stuff. And then I, I, had, to, I had shared it with my mom. God gave me a play to write. I was telling my daughter on the way home, it's called Order in the Church. So now I'm really putting my heart into this play. Because um, I know God gave me that before the pandemic, and sometimes we procrastinate. And um, mm-hmm. I just know I did a play here, and producers came after me. They offered me money to do tours. I turned it down because God told me to come here and find out. I, I relocated to Atlanta from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I came here to take a play to the theaters. 
And um, I haven't been in. I've been here 10 years, but I'm finally going to get this play in the theater. I'm, pl- I'm finally going to oh, get rid wow. of the That's why I say when fa- my Facebook say, when Fear Knock sent Faith the Answer, I'm finally taking order to the church to the theater. And I'm going to direct it. I'm going to do everything because God told me to step up and find out. He told me don't let nobody do it. He It's something God want to show me in it. And so... You ain't going to know when I lose, I'm doing this here at the theaters, and I'm going to do it where I tried to cheat. I tried to do a local casting call, you know, because it felt safer. But no, God, God messed that all up. I did the casting call, but God said that ain't what I told you. I said worldwide. So I'm going to step out and find out. I'm going to do a worldwide casting call. I'm going to step out and put deep, you know, when I lose. I got nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. You have so much to talk about, and we only have 30 minutes. I mean, I love the fact that you married the love of your life and Fresh Wind. I see this as one of your major books. Um, and then yes. you're writing a, a major play. And uh, what keeps you going when you're having most uh, many hats to fulfill? Well, you know, um, what keep me going is the fight. The fight. I got my fight mm. when, when I made it through that 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 hard time at the age of sixteen when I was getting out. When I I mm. I, I had got a determination because uh, after I got home, I hid that secret for years, and I was hospitalized for years back and forth due to the back sets and stuff. So nobody knew, and my family didn't even know until years later. So what kept me going is I always said, I'm going to fight because I want my kids to know to fight. And I have a great support team. I have my children and as well as my family. I have a very close family. So I have all my sisters, my brother, my my children, my husband. I have a support team. My family in general, I have a support team. But a lot of families are not close Um or don't get along, you know, it ain't no family perfect. Ours not perfect, but we we love, I, I love for each other is perfect. And I have a great, amazing support team, my husband, my kids. I mean, anything I do it in conference, my sister will fly in, and they support what I do. And I do this here to show my kids one day that, you know, no matter what obstacles get in your way, you fight. And you show, and I show you, you can fight so good. I graduated from high school at 42. That means you can still do it. I'm I'm sitting going 60, and I, I don't look like what I've been through. I look like I'm about to go on 40, mm. you know? <laughs> and my kids will be laughing right now. They probably all here cracking up because <laughs> they think I oh, think wow. I'm like that. But I'm telling you, I have a, my, my grandkids. I have some grown grandkids now. It's, I have an amazing team. That's awesome. I love mm-hmm. that because family uh, is important, you know? Not only family um, that you're grown up with or um, that you know all your life, but also your um, your spiritual family. That is so important so that we can and that's awesome that you are able to overcome um, the early times in your life. Do you mind giving us a little glimpse of what happened when you were 16 so that I'm it can sure be helpful for those who are going through the same thing because... Kidnapping is a serious thing, and unfortunately, there's a lot of sex trafficking that goes on, too. Yes. Well, I, I sure will. And, and just so you can know, my pastors, Pastor P.T. and Lady K, they they my pastor. That's my daughter, my oldest child. So oh, that's wow. my, my spiritual parent. They my spiritual parent. They don't like me to say that because they the kid. But that, that's my spiritual parent. And, um, and, and and so uh, um, it's amazing. I'm able to uh, serve under them as an associate pastor at the World Sacred Church. So, yeah, I'd love to tell you a little about it. At the age of 16, I never forget it. My mom was out of town. I was staying at my second oldest sister house. Um, I went to school that, school that day, and um, I missed my bus coming home. And for the first time, uh, this was school was on the south side, and for the first time, I had to take a city bus from that school, and it was way out. And I really didn't know how to take that bus home. 
And so they was trying to walk me through how to do it. And so to make a long story short, I got on the bus and I got on the wrong bus and I had to get off. So they told me just to ask the bus driver. So he told me we was going to end up on State Street. So I knew how to get to State Street and make it home from there. I just didn't know my way around. So when I made it to State Street, it was a prison by there. So I guess it was so many people that got out of prison or whatever or got out that day to the bus was so full. And i never forget, it was nowhere to sit. And this guy, um, when everybody, a lot of people got off at one of the stops, and this guy told me to sit down. And I didn't want to. i never forget. I was so scared. And I didn't want to. But he kept telling me, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to do anything to you. So and it's, a, it's funny how it happened. He talked to me. And he kept telling me he was my friend. Now, I never, I'm telling this in my book. I don't know why it meant so much to me to have a friend. So he told me he was a friend. I told him I couldn't talk to Ben. I was a virgin, so I had never had sex or anything. And um, and he was telling me he was my friend. So to make a long story short, I, he tricked me and gave me my phone number and said he'd be my friend. I said, I can't have a phone call. I can't talk to me. He said, when I hear your voice, I know your my friend voice. He kept saying the word friend, and I answered. So he called me, and I had told him so much that my parents were out of town. My sister I was living with was that word. He knew too much information. So then I, um, he talked me into, he said he enjoyed being my friend and talking. He said he asked me what time was on my bus pass. And see, I tell the story in my book because it's so serious not to let somebody call you. He lured me back out of my house. Mm-hmm. With the, He called on somewhere in there. He figured out she, that word friend was doing something. So he tricked me into that. And so I end up going and never made it back home. And, and the funny thing is the first day I was there, his mother was there. And she asked me, are you, how old are you? You look like a baby. And I was finna tell her I was 16. He said 18. And so immediately I, I started getting scared. And I was like, oh, I got to get home. And this is so funny. She, he tricked me with the time. So I missed the bus. And so now I was scared to call my sister. So at this time he hadn't bothered me. His parents were there. But the next day they went to work. So I said, okay, I knew if I get to my mother, you know how you always know if you get to your mother, you'll be safe. I said, my dad, my dad used to drink. So I thought, I said, I don't want to get on whooping. So I did not want that whooping, but I'm telling in my book, I wish I had to get that last whooping because he did take me to the phone booth and let me dial home. And when I called home, my daddy answered and I panicked and I said, I'm going to get a whooping. They made it back in town. I hung up. I said, I wait until 12 and call my mother. That's the worst thing I could ever did. So at 12 o'clock, around that time, he told me he wanted to show me the upstairs. And he took me up there, and he went in a room, and I, he left me in the kitchen for about 10, 15, 20 minutes. And I, could, I asked him uh, what was going on, and he told me to be quiet. He, he turned into a mean man, and he had been to hangar, so I thought maybe he locked, had a car and locked the key in the car. He had literally burnt that hangar and told me this is what I put up my prostitutes when they don't do what I say do. So I knew immediately I was going to get raped. And then after that, he raped me all day at the house, and then, of course, parents got home. He took me to another house where his brother had a 16-year-old, but she was 18. She said they had her since she was 16, though. And he stood at a room door, and he would let me come in all day, every day, and rape me. And she she told me if I run for it because he had all my information, he said he would kill my parents and my family. So I thought I was saying to try to save my family. And then one day he got to a guy, and that guy was a police officer, and he didn't want me at the house. He told me he wanted to take me himself, so he allowed me to go. And this one raped me, and then because I told him my family was rich and they would give him money, and he had already raped me, and he, I said, I'm little girl looking for dead or alive. He knew then he had to kill me, so he's the one that strangled me to death and, and stripped me back back. And then when I woke back up, he was going to leave me in the alley. I saw a knife in his hand and a green bag, so he was going to cut me up, put me in the bag. But he heard some noise, but he knew I was dead, and he didn't think it was me. 
And when he looked up, I was running down the alley but naked. I went door to door but naked. And I heard God for the first time say, turn the door now. And I ran into somebody's house. He screamed, she screamed, and I screamed. They put me on some overalls. They didn't call the police, and they put me outside. I turned the corner. I was back into the hands of pimp for one more, one more week. And I remember almost getting hit by an 18-wheeler, and I ran about a block, and then I repented and told God I was just ready to die. And then uh, he had me one more week, and so I just tricked him. I met a little Caucasian girl in the bathroom. I tricked him. I told him I, I found, she had a quarter. I was able to call home. My older sister answered, and I told her where I was, and she came there, and I ran for my life. I told him I think I was big enough to do what the other girls was doing, and he trusted me. And my sister pulled up. I jumped in the car. She took off, and she was headed home. And I remember her telling me, you're not, you're not going to get a whooping. And I remember saying in my head, I'm not taking another whooping. <laughs> and so it, it was amazing when I got home, you know, my 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 mom, you know, they was all there, my family was all there, and you know, in the book to tell the rest is coming out this year. Oh it didn't wow, come out please because I kept wow. trying to make it sound cute. So it would have been wow. I kept trying to make it sound cute. But it ain't gonna you sound have cute stories. Now. The whole story Oh wow. You are an amazing soul. I mean, you have a story that, oh, my goodness. God was definitely with you. Oh, my goodness. Well, 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 through me telling my story, I found out that my kid's uncle had raped them. And one of them from 2011, which blessed me to put that in my book. And um, she was able to face him a couple of years ago. The other one is okay. But, the, you know, the fact that he did it, you know, and then I, a lot of people have given their life to the Lord. Just this year, past year, a young man came and spoke in my conference uh, from 2 to 11, no, 5 to 11, 22. His daddy raped him, his own blood daddy. So through, through, sometimes God takes what you've been through in your life to deliver others. And so Other people. I vow that I would travel the world doing this. And I, it, 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 this would be... The rest of my life is that vow that I would put down strongholds of men and women in an international global move is hosting now the She Smile Present He Smile, and that's a nonprofit organization. And I'm praying to God that people sponsor it in a big way because it's winning these people back. Mm. Wow, my sister, I'm just like, my, my, my mouth is wide open. I'm like, wow. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm just so grateful God had his hand on you and he protected you. And I know nothing, just for you to share that story, because I know when you share it, it takes you back to what you went through and just, Knowing that you still got this wonderful joy in your in your tone is amazing to me, and I know you, well, you know our blessing. And I'm healed. Like right now in my conference, what I did, I brought a psychiatrist in this past year because I want people to know: stop trying to go into marriage and go into your life without really dealing with that five year old that has been raped or the that six-year-old, that eight-year-old, that 10-year-old. And so I decided I wanted to be healed. And I, now that God healed me, and, yeah, you think about it, today I watched the whole movie, and I thought I saw a lady chained up, but come to find out, it was, it was trafficking all the women. So it took me to a place today. You know, it did. So you have your moments. But at the end of the day, you don't, you're not who society you say you are you're not you're the victim and, mm. and i know that in my mind and exactly. i have to let out mm, mm, mm. wow Woo. <laughs> you're i mean and you're you've been on fire and did you for the lord ever since then just oh yeah amazing I, i'm excited about it mm-hmm. not be excited and to you have the story to Somebody comes wow. forth every time. Somebody comes forth every time. I started on Clubhouse and I started telling my story. I have hundreds of women that that calls me and tell me in the end that they've been raped. They they coming forth now. So my thing is my biggest thing is 
to take this she smile and he smile and make sure men and women all over the world know that they could get their smile back. You're the victim, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that story and um, wow, kidnapping at 16 and you're a kid yourself and wow. <laughs> you And since then you've been on fire. You marry your, the love of your life. You're doing so many different books and now you're writing a play. When is that book coming out? So I can be looking for the one that you're going to talk about your experience at 16. I plan on I plan on releasing this book for my my 60th birthday, which will be October the 18th. And okay. I I know God gave me some specific instructions for this book, so I okay. do believe this gonna become a movie eventually. Oh, absolutely! I could see it on Lifetime because uh, those are the type of movies that need to be heard because um, also, and it's a true story. Yes, it's a true story, and not only that, you escaped. Wow. Yes. They called me. Wow. You know, rain, the, the rain contacted me about 20 years ago, and they wanted me to go in the book called Rain, and they, they, that's when I understood. They told me I'm a survivor. They said, we look for people like you. You're, 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 you're a survivor. You are. Not everybody is surviving, and I almost didn't survive, but I spent my... My life, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, in hospital. I went to hospital every day. I went to paramedics every day. And my family didn't know that, you know, they didn't know because I hid the rape. I hid it. I just hid it. And you know what? That hide mat almost killed me. One day I decided I didn't want to live no more. And I ended up going, if I shot that guy, I know he said the word. He got me a bit and told me. He would strangle me, and I went back to the 16-year-old, and I ended up shooting him. So I didn't just shoot him to shoot him. I, it was what he said to me. So when I got out, I went and signed myself into this nut house, this hospital for that, that ward, and I thought I'd wake up the next morning and go out, and that doctor would not let me out unless I talked. And that was the best thing that happened to me. He said, I could end all your hospital visits in one Day and I said, "How?" He said, "Go let your mom and your family know you've been raped." I said, "But that was oh, years." He said, "Don't oh. matter. You could be healed. No he more." I kid you not. I kid you yeah. not. When I went and told him, I just thought, I, "If I hide it, nobody would never be able to judge me." See, that that was the trick of the devil, though. He, it, the devil wanted me dead, so he made me think. Because I did a lot of running after that. I mean, I would be outside and. The devil tell me, hey, they're coming to kill you. You know, so it, you, even though I got home, it, it didn't stop there. I had it was paramedics in my life in hospitals and paramedics. I remember my sister took me to the hospital. The, the emergency rooms knew my name. I had been to everyone over 100 times. They said, oh, that's just Sherry. You want to sit her over there. You know, because they couldn't believe what I was feeling was real, but what they, they was testing wasn't. So... I, I mean, I had so many hospital bills, so many. And I, I would go out, my girlfriends didn't like being a friend because the paramedic came to the restaurant, the disco, wherever I was. And that's how my life was. And then I just decided I didn't want to live. I ate potato chips for one year, and I drank Pepsis for one year. Mm. I took a bag. To, my family didn't even know I was spitting in a bag. I would sit there and eat Thanksgiving and Christmas. And nobody knew I spit in the bed. I couldn't swallow because he strangled me. I didn't know I swallowed, but I hid that from my family. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I was a straight up virgin. All my girlfriends knew it growing up. They all knew I was a virgin because the boys didn't want me around because I wouldn't let them mess with me and stuff like that. I was a virgin. I had said, I'm going to wait until I'm 18. I was a virgin. I was straight up a virgin. And I'm telling, mm -hmm. and I didn't write that book because it would have been fake anyway. Because I was saying, saying I wasn't doing it the way I really felt. Like I wanted to say, uh -huh. big black nasty hands touch me. That's how I'm talking now. I'm telling the real story in the book now. See, I was the, trying to the raw. make it sound cute. Uh -huh. oh, I'm, I'm cutting raw in that book now, and I'm a cutting raw sister. Because you know, once you've been through all wow. that, you, you know what else. You got you no know, time. You don't have time for plan. You you got to just settle mm -hmm. like it is. 
I have a question. What made you keep the rape inside? Did you feel embarrassed or did you want to continue on protecting your family or both? Well, it wasn't that because he had already told me if I, if I go back home, he would kill my family. And he literally called that house. When I went upstairs to go to bed, he called the house. And I remember my sister said, telephone. I got my phone. And my dad picked up the phone. And I'm going to tell you the truth, my dad at that time had a little drinking problem. So you know how your parents make sure they ain't drinking and get to you or nothing. So he, she was telling me, my mom made sure I go up to bed. And then the uh, when I took the, um, when he called, he called and when he was on the phone saying to me, oh, you didn't believe when I said I'd kill you? I said, at this point, I'd die before I'd be with you. And, 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 and my dad, he was drinking. He picked up the phone. He said, get off that phone. What did you, a slut or something? And I just panicked. And I, and I just said, I never tell nobody. I just I never tell nobody. And, and then one day, about a week later, my brother and sister, they was playing fighting. And my brother put his hands on her, her neck like he was strangling her. And I started screaming. I scared both of them. And they looked. And I said, call the paramedics. I'm dying. See, I didn't know I was going to be flashback, and the secret inside of me was going to try to kill me. Because that secret inside of me made me spend my life in hospitals from that point. That was the first day the paramedic called. That week, about 10 times the paramedic was called. <laughs> so so wow. then every week, it was like that. When I moved, when I when I had my first baby, paramedics was called every night of my house. And if, if the paramedics were called, I was at the emergency room. And then I never slept at night, so I prayed all night. I prayed all night because I couldn't sleep at night because the devil told me he was coming to get me. See, that spirit, it was a spirit, a, a demonic spirit deposited in me because you got to remember, all the men that slept in me, all these spirits was in me. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. to you spiritually mm-hmm. denounce them and decree that exactly body, daddy, uncle, whoever they... Head, and I'm telling in my book that when he raped me, he didn't just rape me. He raped me in every hole there was. And see, you you be yeah. saying to tell us, but but I, I I'm I'm a so excited to tell it because I hid it so long. And every time I tried to put that book out, God would let something go wrong. He said, "Cause you ain't putting the truth out." She said he wants it real because. You know, you know exactly how how you're feeling at that time. So he is ready for you because I know I would buy one of, I would buy that book because you're showing uh, us in spite of what you've gone through and you know, the fact that you were almost um, really killed by your kidnapper, God had his hand over you. And just to know that you serve a survivor in kidnapping, you, that's unheard of. Really, it is. And you know um, what? It's funny. After all these years, a man bumped it. I was telling my kids about it. I just told the security guard where the, all about it, where I had my salon. And right after I told them, I'm writing a book about it when I was 16. And I said, I, in that book, it's talking about, I said, if I ever seen them, if he act like he didn't remember me, I was going to kill him, whether I was in God or not. And all of a sudden, right after I told my whole salon that it was 12 of them and my kids, a guy bumped into me and said, do I know you? You cute like, lady, do I know you? You look familiar. I said, I'm writing a book about you. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm writing, think, of, think to yourself, why would a 16-year-old be writing a book about you? After all these years, I bump into this rapist. After all these years, and then he tell me I'm cute and say I look familiar. Do he know me? And I told him, you're going to remember me. And I, it was just so happened. My kids and everybody was there. They are here now. They was there. And they was all in the hall of this mall. And he walked backwards. And I told him, your mother died and you didn't go to the funeral. your daughter is ran, ran away as of today right now you got high blood pressure you cut a hole in the wall and bed to wipe the door he said how do you know all this 
I told my guy with the mafia, I was going to make sure you was that you was, I was going to make sure you died. I said, but I wasn't going to let you die by gun. I could have been and shot you. I just saw you. I could tell you where you didn't live. And he said, so I said, but I, I said, I slept with a guy in the mafia because I wanted to get you to kill. Well, he tricked me. He didn't kill him. I said, but I could have got you myself, but I didn't want you to die that way. I said, you was going to be in a basement. Remember that movie, Foxy Brown? I was taking every, I'm talking about in my book, every fingernail was going off. Wow. Everything about you was going to, I was going to let you know what it was like to let a hundred, almost a hundred men. I stopped counting, so I say I exaggerate the numbers after 50. You know what I mean? And, and mm-hmm. you know, when you don't know how to count no more. And I told him, I always had a plan to take you and tie you down in a basement and let you know what it's like to be raped by all the men. And then I'll say, I was going to pluck you. I'm, I'm telling in my book, people don't want that book because I'm telling the truth in the book. I mean, you can't lie. I have no, you cannot life. lie. No, no. Come on. I, I have my own that. way. Get him and I, I ain't crazy neither, but I have my own I know. <laughs> yeah, but God, yeah. I mean, mm. Mm-hmm. I Hallelujah. God, God saved me in between that going to prison that even though they let me go the next day, but I had sat there a year that was, I came out of prison saved and I never looked back. I told him, you better thank God that he got a hold of me before I got a hold of you. So. Mm. And now you're here with a wonderful family support and great success on so many different books, and you also have a radio station too. Like, whoo! You're just so amazing. Well, no, I don't have a radio station. I used to, I used to be on 1560 in Wisconsin, but I am going to eventually go back to the radio or, or, uh-huh. you know, or television. Or television. So I got my own uh, girl Leo uh, show. Um, I started on uh, Facebook, but I have okay. to offer to do it on the. Well, okay, I didn't okay. never do the podcast. I just did my own girl live, but I start. I did get offered about five times to come to now, now on television. Somebody contacted me recently uh, last year and wanted to give me twenty five television stations. I turned it down. That ain't my dream. Television, television ain't my dream. You know, to, to <laughs> I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. You know, that ain't that ain't my dream. You know. I know I'm going to be a billionaire one day, but television, you know, being on television is one thing. I don't mind coming to television, but I don't want to do what y'all do. You know what I mean? I I, I, I do. know who I am and what I want to do, and it's not just I love hosting the She Smile nonprofit organization, um, and it, you know, and uh, I, I'm very excited about what God is doing in ministry, and um, I'm looking forward to great things that way, but uh, uh, television, that's too much energy. You have to uh, monitor people. That ain't me. That ain't my dream. That ain't my business. I'm a faith woman. Mm. I know exactly what I want. <laughs> you stay in your leg. I'm like you on that one. So, you yeah. know, you are just so amazing. I mean, your story is just like, wow, very unique. Never heard of a story like this ever. And you, you have this joy. You have accomplished so many wonderful things academically, spiritually. And my question is, um, what are some of the hobbies that you like to do for yourself? What are some of your hobbies? Okay, I, I, I'm a skater. I, I, oh, really? I, oh, girl. I okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Okay. Skate for real. <laughs> I believe you. I mean, I tried to skate back. You know, I haven't skated since high school. I thought I'd, you never forget, but when I tried, I fell. So maybe you gave me the push to go try it again because I love to skate back in those days. I get when you're I you to give me a car, girl. Let's go skate. No, okay. Okay. Um, okay. I'll be there this summer. I will have to do that I'll, because. Yeah. Right, so you know how they do the backwards and uh, you know the I can do why <laughs> the ATM yeah. movie. I, that's you, huh? <laughs> girl, when me and my husband met, one thing we had in common: we both were skaters. He was from Chicago, and I was from Milwaukee, and we both knew oh, how to wow. skate. Real good. 
Yes, I'm a skater. I I have I I I have brought me some good skates because I can skate real good. And um, and then I'm a hairstylist, so I love fashion. Okay. I love you. You know, I'm a hairstyle. Been hairstylist for thirty years. And um, so I do hair. I did many hair shows and stuff like that. I've won some. Um, and then my dream before I had got raped, though, my dream coming up as a kid, I always knew what I wanted to do when I was a kid. I always said I was going to be a nurse. And so I, my dream You're never to too be late. Uh-uh, You're never too late. You're never too late. Oh, you only did that. No, no, no. You know, I went from being mm-hmm. a nurse to a boss. I wanted to be a nurse when I, if I was going to work a job, but I worked some nursing mm-hmm. homes, and when I saw what they did, I got too involved with the people. So I just couldn't. I, I, I felt so bad for them. They didn't have families, mm-hmm. and 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 I would lose my job because I'd be in there modeling for them and doing all kinds of yes. things. You know, because I, I don't I, know how I, to separate that. You know, you can't be emotional when people pass, yeah. or you can't feel sorry or cry when they're sad. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. I'm too emotional to be a nurse. I just right. didn't like them living there by themselves with no family. So my thing exactly. is, my part is, I tried to be their family. I brought choirs to the nursing home. I even, when I would go out and party, I even brought, invited everybody <laughs> to a party. And when the guys got there, it was for one of my old patients. So I got too, too involved. You know, it didn't work for me. I didn't want to see see what they would do to the people. And I always said, my mom never, never be no nurse home because I saw what they would do. And so I didn't, but I knew I wanted to be a hairstylist. I used to model, and that was my passion, modeling and hairstylist. That's what I wanted to do. And then, and I always know I was going to be a, you know, a boss. I always knew I was going to own things and be an entrepreneur. And at, at a young age, I owned several salons. I'm actually looking for one here now. But I always owned salons and I owned daycares. I always knew I was. I would be a boss, and I would uh, own my own stuff. I always knew that. I knew that from the kid. It was just in my head. It always was in my heart how to get to my oh, next wow. And I wear many hats because I don't just get stuck on one thing. So if one thing don't work, I do. I always believe I'm a I'm a, a strong woman of faith. I believe I could go after anything and God to do it. That's just where I am in my faith. I teach That's faith. Awesome. I got a faith boot camp coming up. Um, mm. And I'm teaching the five pillars, pillars of faith, how to deal with your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit, and your faith, walk in God, and how your your blinded faith could get you anything you ever want in that life. You got to just be okay with being blinded with it, because that's how God deal with us, with what we don't see and not mm-hmm. what we see. So that's I'm going to be true. teaching a boot camp, uh, uh, increase your faith boot camp coming up soon. Yeah, I will definitely make sure I get in touch with you when I visit Atlanta because I love your spirit. Oh, Lord, my sister. Um, what kind of legacy would you like to leave behind when God calls you home and get your wings? Well, um, to be honest, I have a spiritual legacy, and that the same thing my mom left behind. I would want my kids to know they can do all things a faith like mm. that. You can always have whatever it is you want. You ain't got to rob nobody. You ain't got to take from nobody. You ain't got to be jealous of nobody. You can, you can, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The legacy, and you know, I thank God. Um, even with my children, I don't look for them to go to church. They, they beat me there. So, see, when you, you build your legacy when they're a child, the Bible says train a child the way it should go so when they get older and want to depart. And then uh, yeah. the number one legacy I want to leave behind is is they know they bosses. I raise bosses. <laughs> I, I, I like you. <laughs> so I like you. You. Can do it. you can have anything. My kids all know how to do hair. They know how to make money. If they don't make it just because they don't want it. But I'm telling you, the legacy is always, you know, you the head, not the tail. Don't let nobody belittle you and don't let nobody make you think it's because you failed in something, you can't win. I didn't graduate mm-hmm. at 42 for you to lose. I did that for you to know you can win no matter what. The sky, mm-hmm. you keep going and you keep pushing. You're a pusher. It's a pusher in you. 
So that's the legacy. They 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 all know they have faith. Your faith will override anything your bank account. Your faith will purchase thing your bank account can't even purchase. So come I on now, divine money. And come on, come on. See, you got to forget Ooh. about the money and take your faith. Your faith will carry you where your money can't even. Yes, it will. Be taxed, you know. So that mm-hmm. I teach you level faith, next level faith, you know. So, so if you, I make sure I give you the information for that boot camp, that boot camp alone and get people to their next level. When you read my book, Fresh Wind, it automatically get a person to their next level. It's one chapter I have in there. The third chapter is called The Finisher. It say, how can you start something you never finish? And how can you finish something you never started? And it talk about staying in your lane. See, I'm a person that mm-hmm. likes to just stay in my lane. You ain't got to copy nobody. You ain't got to be like nobody. You be yourself. That's the legacy I tell my kid. What's in you is great. All you got to do is, you know, reach inside of you, find out what's in you, find out what God, your purpose for God. I don't desire nothing but what God has for me. And what God has for you is for you, and ain't nobody can get in the way of stopping. Mm. Wow. My sister, uh, this won't be the last time you hear from me, but uh, <laughs> wow. Um, why can't people reach out to you um, to uh, come on their um, radio show or if they would like to come to your boot camp or support your uh, nonprofit? How, they, how can they reach out to you? Okay, they could um, reach me at global.move. M O V E at Yahoo dot com or my webpage is Dr. Sherry C H E R I E Sims S I M S dot com or mm-hmm. uh, I also have a phone number I give out seven seven zero. Yeah, you said you you also said that you're on uh Clubhouse. What's your clubhouse name? Oh Oh, yeah. Now, Clubhouse, now I host a pretty nice room at Clubhouse, a pretty big room at Clubhouse. I host the Hot Topics in Clubhouse by Dr. Sherry Sims. Hot Topics by Dr. Sims. Okay, I will definitely make sure that I follow your room. And what's your name on Clubhouse? Everybody call me Dr. C. I, I'm Hot Topics Dr. in the garage. Uh-huh. Hot Topics, okay. I'm gonna look for you. And so and the way you spell you spell my name with a C C H E R I E. Okay. Hot topic be quiet and then Oh really? What well, that so you don't mean have it? Actually actually I was gonna host the room tonight, but I'm I'm not gonna do it, but I'm doing one tomorrow. It's called Hurt People, Hurt People. Hot Topic in the Garage is gonna be on fire. Wow. Is it uh, PCH Hot Topics? Is that you? P- you said PCH? No, I'm just Hot Topics. I'm trying to figure out where you're at. Okay, I'll figure okay. it out. Uh, I'm going to figure you out where you at. Because <laughs> I want to hear some I, of your Hot Topics. So. If you text my number, there's seven seven zero five six eight four zero five seven. I um, uh-huh. sent a link to the hot topic in the graph. I would do that. I would do that. Oh my goodness, my sister! I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity to get to know you more. I am blessed <laughs> by this wonderful information. Oh my, Jerry! Do you have anything you would like to add? Because I'm still in awe about this. Yeah, like, this is this is kidnapping I know. and woo. It's frightening stuff when you're dead, you know, and your children mm. rolling around, think they're having fun, oh, people that, watching. Always. Yeah, it kind of reminds you of a lot of stories that you, you hear. Um, you know, I used to be in publishing, you know, my family, we used to get these these kind of um, stories sometimes from guys that were, wow. you know, deep in the drug world and stuff. They used, you know, they, they used to be hired up in those crack houses, and they used to see a lot of this happen. You know, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. This is my first interview with this 
Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm just like... She definitely no. got to tell a story, though, because, you know, parents got to be very... Um, you know, I mean, you know, you can't be living paranoid, but you want to still kind of make your kids be aware. Look, this can can really happen, you know, and mm -hmm. you just vanish. Yeah, you just vanish because you only hear about them on television. But just to uh, listen to someone overcoming that, and then she had that vengeance, mm -hmm. and she was able to overcome the vengeance, and now she's about to tell. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and it was unfortunate, you know that she had gotten lost, I guess, because, you know, missing her bus. Cause you, I remember back in the day, you missed your bus that took you straight to your neighborhood. You kind of was on your own, you know, on them city buses. Yes. And, and yeah. young ladies shouldn't be riding by themselves. Them guys, them predators, be, they just be searching, you know. They looking for right. it. Right. Yeah, man. To see who they're going to um, get to. Exactly. So right now I'm very cautious when my girls, uh, walk it's like don't walk by yourself. That's right. I come get you because right. now it's really sex trafficking is really out That's there. That's right. Get and them that phone, call you, no matter what it is. You drop everything to go get them. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. But did y'all hear wow. my main thing? You know, predators, predators to be anywhere because even though that happened to me, I said, "Oh, I never let my kids. I wouldn't let my kids go nowhere, stay all night nowhere. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let them do nothing, nothing but with family." And guess what? Guess who got my babies? Family. family. Yep. My yep. ex-husband, my ex -husband brother, got their niece. So guess what? Even when you thought you got away, mm -hmm. it was right there. Yeah. yeah so you got to be careful at all given time. Wow. No matter who it is. Yeah, I remember my pastor, one of my pastors said she would never let her children spend the night, you know, because that's one of the things that was kind of popular when you live in those suburban areas because the kids don't have a lot of people to play with in the neighborhood. You know, those developments, you know, everybody just driving their garage, don't know who their neighbors are. And, you know, the kids start making friends with kids at the school. And next thing you know, they staying over their house for birthday party. You don't really know who's in those people's houses. You know, you really don't know. And I remember my pastor said she right. would never let, and her daughter was on a basketball team. And that's that's pretty popular with sports, you know, athletes spending the night over each their teammate's house. But they don't know who their brothers and sisters and uncles and grandfathers are. Because you hear about grandfathers, you know, following their own granddaughter. So you, this is one of those kind of worlds, man. It is, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's like that. People got to, I don't know, got to pray, I guess. Be cautious. I guarantee you, the rapists, they just be any and everywhere. I married mm -hmm. at the age of 18, and I walked in, I got mad at my husband went across the street. My mom lived across the street. Mm -hmm. I went, I stayed for one week. When I went home, I walked in my house, and he was in there raping a 14 year old. Oh, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that guy, nice. and that was his best friend, uh, sister. Mm. So, you know, they, they you know, it's just a, that got to be a sick know. mind when you think you can get away with that, you know. Right. You, I mean, you did. You did. I mean, you done it so many times that you're just comfortable with the act. So in other words, you must have done it over and over again. You know. Yes. Yeah, Fourteen years old. Yeah, I couldn't even be mad at her when I uncovered her and she was butt naked. I, I told her, I sat down and gave her my story. I told her, I burned some grief and gave him five minutes to get out to keep it real with us because he mm. was finna use golf. Wow. But her, when he left, I let her sit down and I made sure she got home. And I told her my story and told her her worst. I don't know what happened after that, but I know I did. That, that marriage got an odd. But at the same time, it's sad. Is sad that you know they 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 you know that was her 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 brother best friend mm. raping her. Mm. Wow! And she was fourteen. Wow! Yeah, so. fourteen. Yeah, that wasn't his first <laughs> rodeo. I'm sure of that. All right, ladies, we got to get out of here. Our time is up. But Dr. Sims, we appreciate you coming here and sharing your story. And um, don't forget, everybody, go out there and check out Fresh Wind. When Fear Knocks, Send Faith to the Answer. You can check out on Amazon. We try, we'll post a link out there when we post the show. So um, thank you again, and we'd love to have you back. Amen. Thank you. I'd love to come back. Just let me know when. Amen. And then shout out to all of your your wow. friends and followers out there in our in our uh, conference line. Of course, 
you know, let them know they can catch this stuff live when I live link too. So we streaming overseas, streaming, streaming, streaming on the weekend channel dot TV. Look for streaming podcast. You catch all of our live shows twenty four seven. And um immediately following the show, y'all y'all can catch um uh Pastor Dwayne and Kia Matthews out of New York. This show we're gonna be re airing uh, as soon as this one is over. So if you missed it, you'll be able to catch the show with the Devil Slayers. That's right, the pastors out of New York. Taking it down. All right. We got to get out of here. Take care, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Amen. Wow. (laughs) Thank you. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of the devil inside. Worldwide podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Walls Live Worldwide. Hello, people, greetings all the way from the motherland, latest Nigeria, Africa. This is your homeboy, Popular the Generous. Send a shout out to all you all with the love of Christ. I listen always to the Jerry Rice show, and I'm about to do the same. The best place.